Good. Um, so let's uh, continue where we left off. Um, one of the things um, maybe of interest uh, for us to, to um, mention at this stage is um, when there, there are uh, different uh, types of products that produced um, by the steel industry, um, such as uh, rod products and strip products, which we're talking about now, and uh, plate products, heavy plate products. And um, they, they all go through a sequence of hot deformation. Yeah? Um, but uh, because of the nature of the product, uh, the, the strains that are involved, the strain rates that are involved, and the temperature uh, may be slightly different. Hmm? Or, um, and, and so let's, let's, let's have a look at uh, the strip products we're, we're talking about. Yes? So um, you see here that the, the deformation uh, temperatures are uh, above 900 typically to 1,000 in the finishing mill. Yeah? So that's what we're talking about uh, today. Uh, and, and the strains can uh, vary from uh, you know, 0.2 to 0.8 in uh, a large strains then. Um, the uh, interpass times depend, um, are also very variable. And so you have uh, interpass times can, can be a few tenths of a second down to a fraction of a second. Yeah? At the beginning of the hot strip mill, you really have 10, 20 seconds sometimes between a pass uh, in uh, the uh, last stand of the finishing mill. The, uh, the time between two deformations is very short, about 10 of a second. Um, and you have something similar with rod products, but they're, at, they're being processed at slightly higher temperatures. With, with plates uh, products, yes, um, the, uh, the material is, is uh, uh, processed usually in reversing mills, yes? So we are always stuck, we, we never have uh, or rarely have uh, tandem mills, so two, two mills that work in tandem or more mills, like you have, for instance, in the hot, uh, hot strip mill. For instance, it's not uncommon to have seven mills uh, mill stands uh, in tandem in, in the hot strip mill, in the finishing mill, part of it. In plate mill, you usually have reversible rolling yes, uh, mills, and so the, the interpass times are always relatively high. Yes? All right. Good. So in the uh, uh, conventional hot strip mills, in the finishing part, we the, the, the standard uh, stand is a, a four high stand and, and here you see the uh, typical image of a, um, a finishing uh, uh, stands in a hot strip mill, one, two, three, four. This one has five stands and you can see here uh, this, this red strip here, that's the hot uh, strip uh, being rolled. Of course, and as the, te as the uh, strip goes through the, uh, the mill, you get a drop in temperature. And, and this is typical uh, types of temperature changes you go through around 1,000 degrees when you start, yes? And by the end of the process, you are around 900, slightly below in general, hmm? slightly below. Uh, this 900 degree C. Hmm? So this is, you, you uh, see the strip here moving uh, from one stand to the other. We'll, we'll discuss, we'll look into more detail uh, what, uh, what's going on. There's a lot of cooling uh, happening to the strip and to the, um, uh, the rolls also. We'll see in a moment why. Uh, and, uh, and there is also in between the, the two rolls, there is uh, something we call a looper. 
that will take care of the tension uh, in the strip. Hmm? So typical uh, roll diameters, you see here's uh, 700 is a typical roll diameter, 350 uh, millimeters uh, diameter. Hmm? Rolling speeds uh, are high. Hmm? These are 20 meters per second. So we, we're, we're talking about uh, speeds of the order of a uh, few tenths of kilometers per hour. So uh, it's fast. Um, usually we have uh, hydraulic roll gap settings because as you remember, we need to have a very fast response to any change in the process so you can have a stable out exit thickness. Hmm? And, uh, and, and there are some um, uh, things we'll discuss uh, in the, the future which control the strip profile hmm? and uh, which are called, uh, and we'll go into the meaning of these uh, acronyms CVC and SFR um, as, as we come to that part of the course. Hmm? So let's have um, a look at a uh, typical values of speed and reductions in a, a, a seven stand uh, uh, hot strip uh, tandem finishing mill here. So you have uh, this F1 in the industry usually call F1 that's the the first one and F7 or F5, that's you know, depending on how many stands you have, that's the last one. Hmm? And so um, you can see that as you uh, go from one stand to the other, the, uh, the speed increases by a factor of about 10. Yes? And that's because, of course, as you reduce the material, yes, um, you have to make sure that there is no accumulation of material in the stand. So as you reduce the, the thickness, the, sp the, the, the speed has to pick up. Yeah? Okay. And uh, you also have the reduction, typically, uh, at the beginning, uh, remember, uh, is, uh, we have a relatively high reduction, the order of uh, 50%, and then towards the end, a lower reduction. Uh, and uh, the way this is uh, organized, the reason why it's organized this way is to uh, make sure that towards the end, you get um, good surface qualities. Yeah? And so you don't do too much uh, deformations. Mm -hmm. Roll uh, st uh, stands um, uh, pretty much uh, look like this. You have the, the, the frame of the, uh, of the stand, the uh, backup rolls, the top and the bottom, and then the work rolls, top and bottom. Um, uh, and, and then depending on what kind of uh, uh, mill you have, stand you have, you have either screw down motors and gears or uh, hydraulic um, uh, gauge control uh, systems. Hmm? This is um, in addition to this, um, uh, we have what are called we can have what are called uh, bending cylinders to the uh, uh, to the rolls, uh, and they're mounted in so-called May West blocks. Yes, there's a big uh, and what are these used for? Well, you remember that um, it's very important for us to come out with a well-defined st uh, strip thickness. It turns out, and we'll, we'll see in uh, detail how this works, but it turns out that the thickness, uh, and, and now I grossly exaggerate the thing, but the, the thickness actually looks like this, yes? And um, we, we talk about strip profile when we discuss uh, the thickness variations and thickness changes in the transverse direction. Hmm? Now, uh, this is done in a controlled way by uh, doing, um, uh, by bending our cylinders our cylinders. Yeah. So usually when you, uh, when you roll a material, and again I exaggerate this very, very uh, much, the, the cylinders 
will have a tendency to bend this way. So th this is the material that you're rolling, and um, these are your cylinders, your work cylinders. They will have, they will bend this way as you roll. Hmm? Uh, so in order to control this, um, we add systems of pistons here and there, yes, which will cause the bending to be much smaller, yes. In fact, we can control how they are bending, yes. And so this is what these, uh, these bending cylinders do here, these bending cylinders, yes. They're nothing else than hydraulic cylinders. Here you can see how they look like, yes, yes. Um, that can bend the rolls, yes. Mm -hmm. And they're mounted in these blocks, special blocks, that we, in, in, in for particular designs of uh, roll bending systems, uh, in, in this particular case called May West block. Uh, there are other things in, um, the uh, uh, in the mail stand that are uh, of importance. Uh, lubricants that can be used, uh, cooling of the rolls, yes. Um, there can be strip cooling. Hmm? Uh, uh, water sprays to remove oxides that are formed, hmm? and, and so on. Hmm? Uh, of, of very big importance are the roll cooling, and uh, these systems are, it's not just a water spray. Again, we'll talk about this in more detail as, as, we, um, as we talk about uh, product um, shape control and product um, uh, profile control, but um, when you uh, when you roll material, yes, and you are rolling a material that's very hot. So, uh, say this material is very hot; it's red hot, actually. Yes, what happens? Uh, it heats up your roll, right? It heats up uh, it heats up this this part of your roll. Yes, it's in contact with. Yeah? And uh, what happens when you heat up something? Things expand thermally, right? So, uh, so the diameter of your roll is not constant. Yes, where it, where the diameter is hot, yes, uh, the roll will have a larger radius. Yes. So. <coughs> <coughs> if uh, so, so to make sure that the radius of your roll hmm, stays constant, yes, you uh, you will apply uh, cooling to your roll, yes, in a sp um, spot like with spot-like coolers, yeah, so that they e every uh, uh, s uh, spray will cool a section of your roll, yes? And try to keep the temperature constant. And the reason why you do this is because it can very well be that uh, only one part of your roll is, is develops a, a hot spot, yes? And, uh, and so you need to control that particular uh, area uh, by cooling more uh, than other uh, areas. So, so there is a, um, a whole science of, of, strip, of roll cooling and strip cooling in the, the hot strip mill. Uh, so let's just um, um, say a few things uh, about this, uh, about the temperature of the rolls first. Hmm? So um, if, if you're, um, if you're rolling a hot hot material here, so that you have strip material that has a high temperature, right? Um, what 
are you going to let the the roll heat up? Yes. No, you don't let the roll heat up. You you constantly cool the rolls. Yes. Hmm. However, um, it's clear that even if you cool the rolls, when they're in contact with the strip, you can't cool them. Right. So in this area here, yes, you will have heating. Yes, of the roll. Hmm. So how how large is this heating and how deep does it go? Hmm? Okay, so we're going to look at points one, two, three, four, and five, yes? Hmm? And we're going to look at the surface and below the surface, okay? So if you look at the surface temperature, hmm? so one, two, three, four, I go low temperature before I touch the material. As soon as I touch the material, the temperature goes way up yeah, to about 500 degrees hmm, because the strip is hot and the uh, roll is cold, so the strip cools down and the surface heats up. Hmm, uh, the, the, the surface of the roll heats up. And then you go out, you leave the, the roll gap, the temperature drops yes, at the surface, and then when you uh, reach uh, five, the, the spray cooling, the cool, uh, the, the cooling, yes, the, the temperature drops. How long does it last? The whole process, about a second. Okay? How, how deep does this temperature fluctuation uh, reach? Well, at uh, about uh, an inch, about 25 uh, uh, millimeters below the surface, you can see I have an increase in temperature, which is about 100 degrees C. At five centimeters below the surface, uh, I, I have barely a little bit of heating. Yes? Hmm? Uh, so remember, your roll diameter is about uh, 700, say, let's, let's say. We have a diameter. So that's uh, uh, 350 millimeters, yes? So uh, the uh, 50 millimeters here, yeah? so 5 centimeters, that's the zone that's influenced thermally, yes? And uh, that will be influenced, that, that will actually have... And that will cause, of course, um, at the surface, you'll get oxidation, you'll get thermal fatigue, yes? Expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction. And uh, what you also get is a lot of friction, right? As you know. So this is more a technical uh, view of the things. The strip will pass from here to the next uh, stand. Uh, there is a cooling here and cooling on the rolls, and then there is what's called a looper here, which we'll discuss in a moment. Okay, headers to cool the strip. Um, right, you can, you can have a look at these images. So what is this looper here? Um, the loopers maintain the, uh, the tension in the strip. And that's important to have tension in the strip. So uh, f uh, one of the reasons is that if there's no tension in the strip, the strip might go left and right, move away from the, uh, from the position it's supposed to be. But um, what is more important, it corrects for speed differences between the male stance. Yes? Um, so it's important when you roll, yes, that you are in situation of constant mass transfer. Yes? So the material that comes out here has to, per unit of time, has to be exactly the same as the material that goes in here per unit of time. If that's not the case, you either accumulate material between the, the stands, yes, and this will start to hang out, yes, and make a cobble if it doesn't get corrected. Or if you 
the uh, a mass of material that comes out here is smaller than the mass of material that comes here, the tension will increase and you'll have a fracture, yes? So keeping the tension under control is very important. So this looper roll does this. Yeah? It, it puts a little tension between the two, yes? If there is a slight imbalance, it can reduce, it can come down so that um, I have less slack between the two. Yes? If um, there is uh, a difference, this one uh, uh, has a lower mass input, then you can, this looper will pick this up, yes, the slack. Okay, so well, I'll, I won't have much time to, to go into this, but I, I will, uh, again, because of the impact it has on strip quality, uh, I will we'll, we'll talk about this in more detail when we talk about the uh, strip uh, profile. But anyway, the, the uh, uh, looper roll is important to um, uh, to control this, the tension between the two stamps. Hmm? So basically what it is, it's, it's basically a roll yeah, that's pushed against the, uh, the hot strip. Hmm? And uh, so, you, so you have an arm, a roll, and you have an actuating cylinder that pushes it, pushes the roll up or down against the, uh, the hot strip. Okay. So um, there we are, we are rolling uh, this, uh, this material in the hot strip. Uh, we get <coughs> friction, we get um, thermal fatigue of the roll surfaces. Uh, you need to change the rolls very often. Hmm? They need to be replaced because uh, of wear, hmm? roll wear. Hmm? And uh, so ha what, what happens? You don't take the rolls and put them in the garbage can. Yes, you take the rolls and you're going to regrind them. Yes, you're going to um, uh, give them a fresh, um, new surface. Yes, and um, so backup rolls are not in direct contact with the hot strip, so you don't need to replace them that often. So you can replace them every several days to several weeks. Yes. But the work rolls are in direct contact with the hot strip, so you need to replace them very frequently. Hmm? Uh, and, and again, it depends on you know, uh, the hot strip mill and what you make and how fast you make, but it can be every few hours or every few days. Hmm? And, the, uh, of and the, the, the replacement frequency is related with the amount of production. Mm -hmm. so uh, for instance, uh, finishing uh, mill work rolls are replaced, for instance, uh, every few thousand tons of uh, production. Backup roll will be replaced every close to 100,000 tons of production. Hmm? And of course, um, when you are replacing rolls in a stand, there are no rolls in the, in the stand, so you need to do this very quickly. Hmm? So if you visit a hot strip mill, you will always see right next to the stands in the finishing mill, you will always see rolls that are ready to be uh, used as replacements. Hmm? Hmm? Um, so the rolls that are taken out go to grinding shop. Hmm? And uh, these are uh, very high uh, specialized uh, uh, computer-controlled uh, machines, CNC machines, yes, uh, which process, which can process 250 rolls per week typically, and which can grind, uh, regrind uh, uh, the surface of a roll uh, in about half an hour. What you basically do is you remove, you remove the damaged part of the um, surface. Uh, and you also uh, test the, uh, the roll 
for possible defects that are not visible hmm, by, for instance, ultrasonic uh, testing. Hmm. Um, so um, I, I have a, we'll have a specialized, a, a special lecture on roll and roll materials, uh, and uh, and we'll we'll talk about uh, that in more detail. So, but you you typically um, take off again, depending on the amount of damage, et, et cetera, uh, half a millimeter to three millimeters, yes? Um, and if you remember, that's, that's close to this region, thickness, that's thermally in influenced by the temperature changes. Hmm? And, uh, and on, 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 uh, on uh, a millimeter here, and it's... Uh, the backup roll, excuse me, is slightly larger, I guess, because of the, the longer times. But usually, you, you take off a few millimeters, of the order of a millimeter. Hmm? How many times can you do it? About 100 times. Uh, the, the rolls are they're, it's not roll material all the way through, necessarily. Yeah? There are, actually, uh, most rolls will have a surface material which is very hard and then a central core which is a different material hmm? yes so um, there's only so much you can remove yes before you actually need to change the role yeah so for instance a uh, uh, a, a, a 700 millimeter diameter roll will be replaced when you have uh, when when the diameter is is changed to uh, 630, yeah. So that means that every time you change rolls, yes, you have to input new roll parameters, right? Diameter uh, in your uh, control system, hmm? right? And and, and this, these are some views here from these uh, these machines. You can see here. Um, the, it's a backup roll, very big backup roll. It's mounted here, and, and here you see it. Uh, you, you see the uh, the grinding machine. Here you see it's uh, nice and shiny. Here it's rough and uh, not shiny. So this is the damaged part, and the the way you remove this damaged part is with this this special uh, grinding wheel. Hmm? Uh, okay. And uh, usually, the, uh, as I said, the, uh, there are systems which allow you to replace uh, the roles uh, together. The two work roles are replaced together the, 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 um, yes, in, in fully automatically. Hmm? Here, for instance, this is here uh, with a crane. You replace uh, a system that replaces a one, one work role at a time. Uh, this is a system where the two work rolls are uh, pre-mounted and uh, are uh, replaced together. Hmm? Uh, this is a system where you have combination of work rolls and backup roll, uh, etc. So there are different systems depending on uh, you know the, the technology that's installed. The um, so for your information, the um, uh, uh, males cylinders are um, activated by uh, electrical motors. Yes, uh, the the shafts of these motors go into gear boxes. Yes, and then you get output shafts. Yes, and usually you have one drive motor, a gear box, and then two output shafts, yes? Uh, this is a view of this, uh, this gearbox, yes? And so you have here the two uh, output shafts from the gearbox, yes? You have these long shafts that are connected to, uh, via coupling ends, to, in this case, uh, the work rolls, and that uh, make them turn, okay? We'll, we'll see that these uh, um, uh, shafts and the uh, uh, have an uh, impact 
on the um, quality, strip quality, because they can induce vibrations. They're very long elements that can start to vibrate. Yes. And uh, so that is an additional um, difficulty. The uh, very important in all these systems is um, the, the bearings. You know, there's very uh, many uh, advanced bearings are used for uh, rolling mills. Hmm? For instance, here in the, uh, this is, these are bearings for the, uh, uh, for a roll, yes. You can see here you have these um, uh, bearings here that will keep the roll in, in place, yes. And um, you have, so on this side here, on this side you have the motor and the shaft that presses against the, uh, the roll. So on this side, in addition to the, 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 the radial bearings, you also have thrust bearings that, that, that take up the, the force from the, uh, the shaft. Hmm? Okay, lots of, lots of bearing. Um, and, uh, and these bearings have a big influence uh, also on the, the rolling. Hmm? Um, and in particular, it may seem like a, an important thing, but um, these, uh, uh, roll, uh, these bearings are um, uh, we, um, we th they're basically oiled. Yes, they uh, they don't run dry. Yes, we we use oils to lubricate them. Yes, and this this oil film thick is very thin. Yes, but it is a function of the velocity with which the, the roll goes over the this surface. It's not constant thickness. And in fact, uh, it cause, if, if this is the mill modulus, yes, the changes in the velocity of the roll, yes, will change the thickness of this oil film, yes? And this will have a small but real influence on the gap setting. So the, uh, so if this is the mill modulus, you know that at zero load, uh, uh, this point here is the gap opening without strip, yeah? no strip, so S, O. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on the velocity, this point will change. Yes? And that is due to, to basically these, these bearing systems. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good, so um, the material is uh, hot rolled. It is now, uh, after the finishing mill, it's coming out of the finishing mill at around 900 degrees C, slightly lower than 900 degrees C, but it's fully austenitic, yes? And, and so um, we need to cool it down to room temperature. And the way it's happening is um, by uh, cooling. And, um, the first thing you do is you go through a uh, run-out cooling table. Hmm? And it's a very important part of the, uh, the hot strip mill because it, from a metallurgical point of view, because it determines the physical properties, the microstructure, if you want, of a steel grade. Hmm? And so the cooling temperatures and the cooling pattern is defined to achieve certain microstructure and microstructure and mechanical properties. Hmm? So the cooling pattern will greatly influence the properties. Hmm? Um, and, um, and then what we also need to do yeah, is take care of 
a, a problem we already mentioned, and that's the fact that the head and the tail of your strip, yes, take different times to travel through the equipment. Hmm? Uh, what do I mean? Well, if, uh, say, let's just look at one uh, one roll, one uh, mill stand, yes, and we'll just exaggerate, yes, and we'll say that that mill stand makes a very large reduction, yes, okay. So the when we start. Yes. When we start the rolling, yeah, when we start the rolling, the guy at the head, yes, speeds up, right? It will have a much larger velocity coming up than the guy here. Yes? Mm -hmm. So, the process time, the waiting time, yes, for the start of your uh, strip is different from the end, yes? In fact, if you want this guy and this guy, this, the head and the tail, to, ha to experience the same thermal history, you must gradually speed up the process. So you must start slowly, yes, and then as you go, yes, increase the velocity, yes, so that this guy keeps up with the temperature change that this guy will experience. If you don't do anything, uh, this guy will always end up being rolled at a lower temperature, yeah, because it's waiting here. Yes, so it's loose, it's, we're not heating it, so it's cooling down, yes? And it's, it's not being rolled yet, yes? Whereas this guy got rolled right away, yes? So um, when you visit a hot strip mill, it just looks like, well, you know, nothing special, right? It's just being rolled. However, this is one of the things that these control systems must do, is make sure that the strip from head to toe tail rather, um, sees the same thermal history, yes? Okay. So this, this uh, in, in the, the run out tables is, is part of this uh, uh, control system, hmm? okay? So what we, what you basically have uh, is, uh, you know, um, about 60, 70 meters of um, cooling headers, and it basically basically look like looks like a shower, hmm? a shower. Hmm? And so you go uh, going from uh, you know, sh showers uh, g uh, from the top, and then at the bottom you also cool at the bottom with spray coolers. These uh, curtain-like showers that we see, hmm, uh, we call them laminar coolings, yes? And there are typically um, 20, 20 units. And most of the cooling uh, at, of the top part of the strip is done with this laminar cooling. Uh, you also have sprays that cool, yes? And uh, the length of this cooling, uh, this uh, runout table is typically 60, 70 meters, yes? And uh, you use a lot of water, right? So uh, there will be water recirculation uh, issues, which we won't address, but uh, it's there. So um, how does this thing look like? You have these headers here, yes? The, you have this top jets, if you want, this uh, laminar flow. Yes, 
and at the bottom you have bottom jets. Yeah? Why do we have, oh yeah, uh, just, um, uh, uh, and uh, all these uh, headers are computer controlled. So you can basically uh, decide how you cool the strip. Hmm? Hmm? Um, so first of all, why do we have this odd system of, uh, of cooling? So, so the way it works, you, this is one uh, option here. You have uh, a bar here with, uh, with these tubes, yes? yes? And these tubes have a uh, water flow controllers, which can be open or closed, yes? Very easily, you can open and, or close them. And the opening and closing of these uh, uh, tubes, so they... When you open them, they all this row will go open. If you close them, the whole row gets closed. Hmm? And um, and the water basically runs down uh, through this pipe onto the strip. Why do we do this? Well, we we siphon this water down, and it falls on the strip uh, from a height of about 1.2 to 1.5 meter. When that happens, the steam blanket and the boiling film that are formed on the strip surface are broken, yes? And this gives you very effective cooling. What's the problem? If you have something that's very hot and that's flat and you're trying to cool it in a controlled way, well, okay, you have water. What happens when, when water uh, goes on a hot plate? It, it will a boil, right? It will boil. So uh, the trouble is if it's a flat plate, uh, the water has to run off, right? Hmm? So what it does is you eventually, if you don't do anything, you get a layer of boiling water on your strip, yes? And that prevents heat removal, right? So what you need to do is something that very efficiently breaks up this layer, yes? Okay, and that's, that's what this, um, uh, this wa these water curtains do. Very efficient at, uh, at doing this, yes? This lemon flow, so, so and, and so, um, as I said, all these uh, tubes are in, can in principle be uh, computer controls, so you can do give any uh, complex or simple uh, cooling pattern to the um, uh, to the strip. Hmm? So usually we they're um, grouped in banks of uh, laminar cooling heads, hmm? and the temperature will, for instance, if we just do a simple uh, linear cooling, yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so when the strip exits the finishing mill, you measure the, thick, the, 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 the temperature, right? So you you know uh, what the cooling uh, has to be because you define the exit and the coiling temperature. That's the temperature at which you're going to coil this thing, and then you give a cooling. Yes, the cooling uh, rate that you can achieve. Uh, depends um, very much on uh, the thickness, of course, of your product also. Hmm? So let's say a typical hot strip mill product will have six millimeter in thickness. So at the start here, in the first, uh, excuse me, in the start here in here, yes, the, we have a relatively low cooling rate, hmm? the first 16 meters, yeah. And uh, in, when you're in the laminar flow, uh, in, in this uh, region here, yes, the cooling rate can be up to 35 degrees per second. And then once you get out of this, the cooling is two degrees per second, okay? If your strip is very thin, you can achieve 100 degrees per second. And that's considerable amount of uh, very considerable uh, cooling rate. If your strip is uh, thicker, like 12 millimeters, 
uh, you know, you will need um, to live with uh, 17 degrees per uh, second, excuse me, 70 degrees per second, yeah? Um, right, okay. So I, I want to remind you of the fact that um, the, uh, wh when you have a strip center cooling rate that's about 30 degrees per second, you can never have the, the through thickness cooling rate to be exactly the same. So the surface will always experience a stronger cooling than the interior of your material. Hmm? So you can see here every time the, uh, the, the strip hits a, a cooling bank, yeah, you, you see the, uh, the surface cooling down strongly. It's a surface layer that's cooled down. So as soon as you stop cooling, the surface temperature and the interior temperature will move back towards each other. Mm -hmm. So that by the time you, you do the coiling, the temperature of the strip is homogenized. Mm -hmm. and, and this is actually um, calculations for, for these uh, conditions. Uh, Okay, so if we now make the connection between what we, uh, what we learned into our introduction and our, um, and our process, it means that after rolling, hmm, our temperature is about 900 degrees C or a little bit less, yeah? and you first have the, the cooling stage, yes? the cooling stage, all right? Um, just so um, you have an idea of the numbers, so let's say our um, uh, laminar flow section, the, the runout table is about 100 meters, yes? Uh, and our strip comes out at about 10 meters per second, then the time that we are doing the cooling will be 100 meters divided by 10 meters per second, right? So which is 10 seconds, right? So what do we have? And, and we know that our cooling rates here can be uh, I just gave an example there, 35 uh, me, degrees C per second. Yeah? So that means that uh, I can use this to put this on a CCT diagram, right? So, and, um, so I will get a cooling rate like this, right? Okay? It's the cooling rate. It's the temperature of the strip. And now I can, okay, let's say I'm making in the steel plant, in the hot strip mill, I'm making a S275, and you all know what an S275 is. It's a S, so it's a uh, structural steel, according to European normalizations for steels, and the 275 stands for 275 megapascal of yield strength. It's very common steel. What is the transformation information that we have? Well, uh, the dashed line is the TTT. I'm going to use, of course, the CCT line, yes? It means that if I have this cooling rate here, um, the transformation starts during the, the cooling, yes? At this moment here, at around a uh, little less than 10 seconds, or mm, around 10 seconds, yeah? Okay, and then uh, it's partially done, yes? And then when we come out of the, uh, the cooling, yes? What happens then? Well, then we coil the material, yes? 
we coil the material. And there, instead of having cooling rates of 20 to 30 degrees C per second, we now have 20 or 30 degrees per hour. Per hour. So on this diagram, uh, the cooling rate is now like this, much, much slower. Okay? All right. So you see that uh, from a metallurgical point of view, uh, the, what you do in the uh, runout table is very important, has, will have an impact on the, uh, the microstructure you get. And we'll, we'll discuss this in more detail as we, as, as we discuss products and, and how to make products in the hot strip mill. Okay, but so after the uh, um, runout tables, we go to the coilers. The coilers basically take the strip and uh, coil it. The temperature range is between 510, 500 to about 700 degrees C. The choice of these temperature depends first on the metallurgical properties you want to have, microstructure. Yeah? And then there are other things that may play a role, such as uh, the following. If you have high temperatures, if you coil material at high temperature, your strip will be more susceptible to oxidation. So, however, you're using less cooling fluid to, because you, you know, if you cool at 500 degrees C, you, you will need to use a lot of water, yes? If you use, if you go to 700, you use less water to do the cooling because you do less cooling, right? So, um, but you'll have more oxides. So you'll have to remove the oxides and that will cost you also. So there are many elements that come into play, but in general, the first thing you look at in the choice of the coiling temperature is uh, the microstructure. Mm -hmm. so, and you convert it into a coil form, and the result when you have something in a coil form is that cooling rates are very, very low. Mm -hmm. And of course it's easier to transport the coil, no damage, and uh, it's important also coiling temperature choice is uh, also determines coiling defect, and, and these are um, things that can happen in more modern equipment. This doesn't happen very often. Hmm? So the material comes out. You get uh, a section always that guides the uh, strip to the uh, center line of the down coiler. Hmm? And this is the down color view from uh, the side. So what, what you have is the strip will be uh, pushed down uh, between these pinch rolls, yes, going this way. It will be caught by the uh, mandrel, and then the mandrel will, will start spinning and roll up the strip. All right. Uh, again here, um, it looks like a very simple process. Um, down coilers are, and coilers in general are very expensive equipment because they have, you have to deal with uh, very heavy things, uh, coils that are easily uh, 20 tons in weight, yes? Um, and you have to make sure that you don't damage these very heavy coils at any time. So, for instance, um, when the material is still at um, you know, 500, 700 degrees, it's very soft. So the, the rolls that keep, um, th that help uh, wrapping the, the strip around the mandrel, well, you can see these three rolls here, uh, they shouldn't press on this um, head end of the uh, strip because otherwise you will have a, a surface defect here. Yes. So 
there is a system that makes sure that uh, the rolls, the wrapper rolls, are retracted every time this uh, a bit uh, comes by. This is a general view of um, uh, a coiler, a down coiler. Uh, you can see the coil being taken off the mandrel, set on its side, and then uh, marked. The coil is it's, it's called a, a, a coil. It's usually called a black coil at that stage because it's dark from uh, oxidation. Hmm? As, as such, it's, al it's already a product. Hmm? So a hot strip mill can produce, uh, can produce a hot strip as a product, as a final product. Um, the material is basically uh, has the certain dimensions and is also heat treated. So it's fully recrystallized and it can have a special microstructure. So there are many applications where you can use it as such. Hmm? Okay. Um, for instance, uh, when you um, when you have uh, trucks, yes, the the heavy frames of trucks are made are very often made with. Um, this kind of material, hot rolled material, yes? Uh, yes. So it's, all, it's important also to realize that, that it's heat treated, right? It's like, um, uh, it's, it's ready for use, basically. In general, uh, most of the applications uh, will require that you remove the, the oxide layer by pickling. We'll talk about that uh, also. But so, um, so when you, uh, again, uh, look at the um, uh, diagram that we had, so we had the fast cooling in the um, uh, runout table and then the very slow cooling in the um, coil, yes? Now, depending on the fast cooling, yes, you can see, yes, for instance, that I'm going to flip back and forth between these two slides. So this is a slow cooling. This is a fast cooling. If I do a slow cooling, yes, you can see that the transformation Yes, is not completed, it's far from completed when I coil the material. In this case, oops, the other direction. In this case, the transformation may be fully finished by the time I coil the material. So depending on, yes, the t so here for instance, let's go back, oops. Um, this is a slow cooling, and I coil at close to 700 degrees C. In that case, the transformation will not be finished by the time I start coiling. And the transformation will happen in conditions of very slow cooling. Yeah? That means I will have a coarse microstructure if I form perlite, for instance, that perlite will be very coarse and hence very, very much softer yeah, than, excuse me, in the other direction. Yes, if I do this, in this case, I have a uh, much faster cooling rate. The coiling temperature is now lower, uh, less than uh, 600, about 550, yes. I will have more transformation done during the cooling, the fast cooling, yes. And what happens in the coiled, uh, in the coil, will basically be cooling, yes. Okay, so the, 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 the choice of the temperatures in the uh, runout table, 
the coiling temperatures uh, are essential elements in creation, the creation of the microstructure in a hot uh, strip product. Okay. Okay. So we, we've, um, in conclusion, here we've talked about hot uh, strip rolling, and um, we what we presented was basically conventional hot strips uh, mills. We talked about what is important, the reheating, the rough rolling, the finishing, the descaling, and then the importance uh, from a metallurgical point of view, what happens in the run-out table and, and during the coiling. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, the I, I have a um, few minutes left, so I'm going to... Um, uh, introduce the start with the um, the next uh, subject in the course. The uh, the hot strip technology is constantly changing and improving. Yes, it's it's not like uh, you know a set technology that you know process that doesn't change anymore. There's a lot of uh, uh, very interesting uh, new ideas uh, which um, uh, aim to make uh, similar products at much lower prices uh, or better products. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the uh, things that's come up in recent years uh, is what's called the fifth generation hot strip mills and which are very interesting uh, alternatives to the hot strip mill. Hmm? Um, the uh, alternative hot strips mill, or, or the, the fifth generation mills, uh, were built in the, in the 90s, basically. And uh, there are many acronyms associated with these technologies. Hmm? So you, do, you don't have to uh, learn uh, these names, but... Um, CSP is one of them, compact strip processing, mm -hmm. uh, was the original um, uh, alternative hot strip mill technology. And it's evolved into designs such as the inline strip processing, the endless strip processing, the casting, pressing, uh, rolling process, etc. Mm -hmm. What is important about these hot strip mills is that they are compact and they're very cost effective facilities with low cost. Hmm? The reason why there's, they're compact and smaller, etc., is, is because you start off not with slabs anymore. You start off with thin slab casting machines. Hmm? And there the thin slabs, instead of being 25 centimeter or thereabouts in thickness, they are 50 to 100 millimeters, so 5 to 10 uh, centimeters, hmm? so about a fifth to half the, the, the thickness, hmm? um, which then um, are cast. Uh, they, they go into special um, furnaces. They're not cooled. They go right from the caster into a special roller hearth surf, uh, furnace, and there, the rough rolling is totally minimized. Hmm? There are processes which start even thinner uh, uh, starting material, where the strip is two to three millimeters in thickness. Hmm? And that's pressed in rolls prior to re entering a reheat surface. And, there, and th there's only one single stand of, of hot rolling. Hmm? So we'll talk about these, uh, my next lecture, about these alternative designs and their principles. And uh, you'll see that um, they're interesting from a point of view of flexibility, uh, productivity, and cost efficiency. But they're very different from the hot strip mill in the sense that their yearly production Yes, the, the yearly production that they can achieve is much, much smaller than a hot strip mill, okay? 
So that's an important thing to realize as, uh, as we go through the discussion and analysis of these uh, alternative hot strip mill designs. Okay, thank you very much for your attention and um, 